For the record, my name is Warren Limmer. I'm the chairman of the Senate Judiciary and uh, Public Safety Committee. And uh, in the interest of keeping you and our public attuned to what we are doing and what and what is happening in our discussions with uh, in our conference committee, I would like to make a few statements. Right now, we're still waiting on a complete global offer and spreadsheet from the House DFL to address urgent and critical public safety needs. While we were waiting last night for that type of offer to emerge, the Capitol was put under a short lockdown while several, several juvenile carjackers crashed into a police car just outside our office and fled the scene. They not only crashed into a police car on University Avenue, they th then drove across the light rail tracks onto Capitol grounds and then crashed again into a street lamp pole and a parked car. I actually saw this from my office last night. Uh, four suspects ran off uh, juveniles, I suspect, and I think that's been con uh, confirmed by St. Paul Police. I believe they were apprehended. Other staff, other senators saw that as well. And we are grateful for the law enforcement and the state air patrol uh, who were involved in this, uh, and their job, of course, is to keep us safe. They are the administrators of the policies we make in law by the legislature. I also wanted to make comment about another observation I made this weekend. On the way to church on Sunday morning, I came up to the intersection of Bass Lake Road and Highway 81. Highway 81 stretches from Brooklyn Park to Osseo. I came up to a car accident on the intersection of Osseo, of, of, I came up, let me back up, I came up to an accident that I thought at that particular intersection. I later found out there were two cars involved in, in the accident. Uh, circumstances were uh, a suspect had stolen a pickup truck in Osseo. Osseo police had chased that car. Uh, they backed off when the speed went higher than their protocol. They did the right thing. The suspect in the pickup put the pedal down and going through an intersection, he crashed into a car that was awaiting a light. It was later found out that the driver was one of my constituents from Maple Grove, along with his spouse, and she is in the hospital at this current time. We're getting to the point where violent crime is happening not only on a daily basis, it's in an ever-expanding ripple from the inner city of Minneapolis and St. Paul and into the suburbs. When I can see this by my simple driving around the community between St. Paul and my home on nearly a daily basis, we need to take action and we need to take action now. The House DFL needs to get serious about public safety. Yesterday afternoon, Chairman Mariani tabled discussions on public safety and community policing. His quote from the, art, from the paper that he gave me as from a partial offer. It didn't have a spreadsheet. It, it failed to recognize the limitations that leadership had set for our budget. Let me quote to you what Senator Mariani said in his last line, the House will table discussions of law enforcement and community-based public safety investments while we work to reach agreement on items that we're closer to. 
I'm trying to fathom and understand what issues are more closer than public safety and the public investment in law enforcement, fire, EMTs, all of those functions of government that keep our citizens safe and react to the threat of crime. Uh, I just can't understand that logic. I can't understand that the House would walk away from discussions when these types of criminal behaviors are happening right on the Capitol grounds. I want to repeat, we must fund and encourage law enforcement and give them the tools and resources they need at this critical time. We must keep the courts and prosecutors accountable to our innocent citizens that become victims. And when criminals are found guilty, they must receive the full weight of punishment to keep bad people, bad actors, off of our streets. I'll open for questions. Should these conditions persist in terms of this disagreement, what point is this simply not going to get done uh, this session? Uh, to tell you the truth right now, we are still open. Uh, when we left uh, work yesterday, uh, today is the Senate's opportunity to hold the gavel in the conference committee. Uh, we invited uh, the possibility of a conference committed, a committee providing contingent upon the House DFL conferees bring a full, complete, and balanced offer to our negotiations. As of this minute, we have not received any word from the House DFL. Yesterday, their offer included a trade that I noted. One, uh, on one hand, they would give you uh, some tougher fentanyl penalties on first degree sale, but they were looking to trade that for marijuana decriminalization. Does that underscore the gulf that exists between the two of you right now? I think the, uh, the vote yesterday uh, in the Minnesota Senate on the effort for the Senate DFL to bring uh, expanded use of recreation typifies and characterizes our attitude toward any relaxation of marijuana laws. I understand that, but I'm talking about the House's offer to you yesterday that, that attempted to trade marijuana decriminalization for tougher fentanyl penalties, which is what you want. Does uh, that underscore the gulf between the House Judiciary, Public Safety, and you right now? It may, and the reason why I say may is I'd like to have the full discussion on the table. We have not had their full offer on the table to compare ours that was presented to them on Monday of this week. Uh, waiting three, four days in the waning hours of the legislative session, uh, that type of tactic is not helpful to come to a conclusion. We need to have all of the facts, all of their positions, not just one trade-off. We need the whole works, and I won't make any comment on negotiations until I see everything on the table. Then we're willing to negotiate on a variety of things. To Stephen's point, um, when does a bill need to be done, get to the reviser, in order to meet the end of session deadline? I don't know exactly. Um, I think... Uh, if I was going to make a guess, probably by Friday, uh, maybe Saturday morning. Anybody know? Could be close on Saturday. Okay. All right. I would, I would think that we would have to start closing negotiations uh, with the idea that we're coming to a, an agreed-upon conclusion. Certainly by Friday, I think Saturday uh, is getting to the point that it might get really tight to get the follow-up printing and the distribution of those of those uh, of that finished bill to all available players by that time. That's about as close as I can get to it right now. 
At what point does leadership then get involved? Uh, leadership is beginning to murmur to themselves right now, and uh, they're allowing us to have early uh, discussion with our respective leaders. Leaders need to know what we've been talking about, what's in our bill and why. And uh, we're, we're starting to do that. It's kind of a two-track system right now. I'm sure they're doing that as a contingency uh, so that they're prepared in the event that they have to take over. Is it possible that you could have a smaller agreement that sort of does jettison the thorny debate over how much on you know, police and how much on community public safety spending that the House is more leaning towards? Is it possible you put that aside and just kind of do the smaller stuff? Or I guess, yeah, what's your view on that? I hope you don't miss the point. And the point is, our state community is being overrun by violent criminal activity. The funding for law enforcement is imperative to keep our citizens safe. I don't think the House DFL yet realizes our resolve. To that point, is there, are you open to saying, well, I'd rather try and fund more police next year with all the money, should the House or flip to Republicans or whatever scenario, rather than trying to strike some deal where you get some now and some goes to the sort of community-based stuff? Well, uh, we are responsible to the public for the use of our taxpayer money. Uh, monies that might go to unknown nonprofit organizations, organizations that yet to even be organized, uh, nonprofits that may not, may, we have no background on them, uh, that becomes a little risky from a financial perspective. Uh, I'm always open for, for recognized nonprofits that have a good track record uh, to help us do the work with the expertise that they offer. But having a, writing a blank check to communities to then hand that out to unknown nonprofit actors is really a, a high risk for our taxpayers and something that I think needs to be resolved ahead of time. Uh, as you may or may not know, the Office of the Legislative Auditor is currently studying the use of taxpayer dollars in the hands of nonprofits and that's becoming a, a larger and larger issue. Recent news stories have shown the abusive character of some, and I wouldn't say that that's the character of all. I wouldn't even say most. But uh, some of these losses are considerable, and I think it's time. Unfortunately, we have to make sure we use our taxpayer dollars wisely and put it in the hands of people that really know how to do the job. Democrats seem to approach this conversation differently than you do. They want to take things up uh, issue by issue in those subjects where you can agree or it seems close. Can you talk about why you would prefer to have a global offer instead of going one by one like that? Yeah, um, yeah, they are doing that. Uh, I don't understand why they're doing it, especially with uh, less and less time. The clock keeps ticking. Uh, pulling one thread, considering one thread out of a sweater at a time, uh, really doesn't give us the proper context to decide how, it, how one little article affects an entire budget. We have a, a fairly severe, low budget in this case, and it's better to put all of these, all of these elements on the table and then look at it, what can we add, what can we subtract. Doing it one at a time silos each and every single issue to the point that you lose context. And at the end of the discussion, you may have overcommitted. I am not going to overcommit. I'm going to stay within the confines of the budget we were given. That's why we offered the, our global offer on Monday. And unfortunately, that's why we're still here waiting for them to present their global offer, and uh, they still want to 
drip and drab this thing out to the end, I, I fear. Are we done? All right. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it.